Hey folks, today on Free Field Training we are doing our long-term reviews. Uh, a few months ago I asked people what they'd like to see and one thing that everybody said they wanted to see was uh, like where are they now of different gear that has come through the channel. Uh, I have been lucky in that by doing educational content people have wanted to send me stuff to review and stuff to look at. And one thing, one thing that I really like on YouTube is uh, the series by Consumer Reports where companies send them stuff or they buy stuff and then they put it into long-term review. They do short-term reviews of, well, this is the new and exciting thing that's coming out. And then they do long-term reviews where they say, well, we gave this to people for six, eight months and they've said this, they've said that, we've got, you know, this feedback or whatever, this is broken, this is what this has cost us. So in that same effort, in that same method, uh, what I've been doing for the last about year, and I've told people I'm doing this, but it's, it's hard to get feedback on breaking stuff that's really good equipment when you put it into a long-term review. You have to wait a long time for stuff to break. Uh, I've been telling people that I, I've given a lot of stuff away to you know friends and family, people that are actually going to use it. And the other day, uh, we were shooting a follow-up to the Bullet Safe video. If you guys don't remember the Bullet Safe live stream, you'll you'll like where that's going, uh, where we shot. A bullet safe vest three times with a nine millimeter high point and the third round went through and they weren't even like right on top of each other they were near each other and so we went out and got something that's in the same price bracket so this this armor was free you could expect to, to pay about 15 20 dollars for this if you find the right website on the internet it's not really suitable for someone to actually wear because it's so old this is a level 2a vest and we shot it uh, three times with nine millimeter ball uh, the video of this is going to be coming out in the future three times with nine millimeter ball and I literally put the muzzle on like right next to the vest where I'm surprised there isn't more charring on it and it didn't go through and then we shot it three more times and it didn't go through and then the last time well, one of them one of them actually went outside the group a little bit here it's about half an inch away or three quarters of an inch away and then the last time we shot it right on here so the sixth time in the same hole the round finally went through and we got a we got shots of disassembling this and showing where all those rounds stopped and then the last, the seventh, seventh round going through. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, this is what you'd expect from like 15, 20 year old 2A armor that someone has legitimately been wearing for that long. This is from a retired Chicago copper. You can tell by the wear on the carrier how old this is. That's pretty exciting stuff. That's going to make a really good video in the future. You guys are going to really like that. And my brother, while we were there, pulled out the old through night TC 20. So what I thought is I went and collected a bunch of the flashlights that I loaned out to people and I'm bringing them back to show you the wear that's on them and how they're working and give you some of the impressions that people have gotten from them and some of the ways in which they've been used. So the through night TC 20 is what started this portion of the series. My brother handed this to me while I was at his house. We were shooting that armor. And he said, hey, this thing broke. It's like, oh, really? Had it about a year, year and a half. I gave this to him. And he said, yeah, you plug it in. And instead of charging, this light, the little indicator light on the front just kind of flashes a whole bunch. So I'm going to try to put it inside a box here, see if I can get it to where you all can see what he's seeing. It's plugged in right now. Uh, the light won't charge. It just flashes a series of indicators. Now you can see that it goes like purple, red, green, purple, red, green, purple, red, green, really fast. No idea what's causing that. So we took the batteries out, put the batteries back in, tried plugging it in without the battery, and it's still doing that. So since it's still doing that with it out with the battery back in, I'm assuming it either got water in, probably through this USB port that I always complain about. Uh, he's saying that's not what happened. He's had this on his kitchen counter. He charges it when it needs it, and he takes the dogs out in the back here. You see it doesn't, doesn't operate takes the dogs out with it he's like so it's never been dropped in water or anything like that he's got no reason to lie to me there isn't a whole lot of wear on it really just kind of incidental handling wear you can see there and it just doesn't work so my guess would be either some water got in this you know his wife dropped it in the sink or something or the electronics and it failed after a year and a half I'd be pretty upset about that if I had bought it I don't know if it's just this one unit or if this is a problem with all of these charging flashlights. I have noted this type of problem before on external USB charging flashlights. So, moving on. This light, 
got the worst of it because this is one that they said the USB charging port on the back was waterproof. So this is the Nikkor MH12 GTS. And I gave this to my son and let him go camping with it. And this, you can see the little rubber grommet on the back does not close anymore. So that's not really doing anything for you. I mean, you just barely brush up against it, it comes open. And I guarantee you, he wasn't being persnickety about holding that down, but it still works. It still operates just fine. Uh, it's worked all right. He really loves it because it's super bright and he hasn't lost it yet. I should probably put some reflective tape around this one for him, but that's gonna go right back to him. The Olight uh, PL2 Balder. This I've been using at work for training. There's a little bit of wear. You can see on the case, you see a couple of nicks and scratches because this is a great light to have around. I don't have to take the light off of my gun to pop it onto a trainee's gun to teach them about dry fire because I like using the laser on this for dry fire practice with people. I like using the laser for dry fire practice. So we've been using this, popping it on and off of guns. It seems that the the Glock little modifier on there, and you have to unscrew it to put the 1913 rail modifier on it, seems to work pretty well for 1913 rails too. We've been popping it on and off a bunch of guns that aren't Glocks that have normal 1913 rails. And while not, we're not shooting them a whole bunch with this on there, I've got other lights that are out that we're doing that with uh, from Olight. Uh, it, it seems to pop on and off and they're pretty solid on there. So. This one has held up fairly well. We haven't been putting it through a whole lot of beating, but there's other lights that we haven't been putting through a whole lot of beating. I gave my brother a PL Mini. He's got it on his carry light right now. He's getting a holster for it, and he has been carrying it around basically in his car and carrying it around on his person when he's on his property with some big old holster. Uh, so he's getting a concealed carry holster for it so he can carry it more. That one's held up pretty well too, and that's a rechargeable. So We'll see about how well rechargeables hold up to everyday carrying around. Uh, the Terra Lux. The Terra Lux TT5 is actually a pre-channel flashlight. This is uh, before the free field training era. I know there's strength in here. Uh... The Terralux TT5, I, I actually got this, it was just issued to me when I was on SWAT, and I have used it ever since, uh, mostly for security gigs because it comes with a cool holster that's pretty durable. I can just slide it on my belt and have a really, really powerful flashlight. It also has instant strobe mode, which is of limited actual use, but is a lot of fun. You know, when your your main job is to have fun with people, you're working security and your job is to talk with people, and, you know, somebody goes, oh, what's that? You go, oh, it's a flashlight, see? And people go, ah, it's, it's a fun time. Most people get a chuckle hurt, but it kind of throws you aback. So this has been doing pretty well. I've dropped it a bunch of times. It's gotten wet a whole bunch of times, and it's worked fairly well for me. It's done everything I've asked it to do. And then our newest addition to the stable, the PowerTac E5. We got this in shield box a couple months ago. And it came with this little therm ring. So the PowerTech E5 is very light for the cost. Uh, it's pretty bright. It does the job fairly well. It works really well with this little therm ring. And one of the concerns that I had with this was that the therm ring always seemed like a great way to break your knuckle if you end up doing this and then end up fighting with somebody and they grab a hold of it and crank your, your hand back. And uh, nobody likes their knuckle broken. But it has a release on here let me see if I can get it on there where if you pull too hard on it it just it just comes open and it's not it, you don't have to pull really hard if you you pull and twist this comes this comes open so it doesn't seem to be the type of safety risk that I initially thought it was going to be although the pocket clip portion of it I've not found any use for because in order to clip this on a pocket the ring sticks into you or pulls sideways or pulls your pants sideways I don't have a whole lot of extra room in my pants to, to eat up with a, a ring thing. And with it opening like this and being made of polymer, I don't know how much of a, a good knuckle duster this is actually gonna make, so. I like it for being able to handle things and flip back and use it. But uh, as far as knuckle duster in the pocket clip, I don't, I don't see a lot of point in that, honestly. So this light and this light, I've also been using with the Explore Post at work, trying to get a little more time out of it. I think I cut myself shaving this morning. Oh well. I'm trying to get a little more time onto them. 
Uh, the explorers think the laser on this is cool, but that's not ever mind to me. But they really like this thing, and we've been doing a lot of house search training and vehicle stop training with it, with the explorers. And I've been playing with it, and they've been playing with it, trying to get as much street time with it as possible, because it's a little small to be using as a duty light. But we've we've gotten a lot of use out of it, and they all seem to really like it. So that is the oh, and I've got one more thing that we're doing long term reviewing of. You know my old thermos cup. This is the newest design of thermos cup and instead of the roundy slider it has just a click up and down slider this isn't as as waterproof you can't like dump it upside down and, and expect coffee to stay in it but it is a lot easier to clean because to clean the top of the old one you have to like twist parts and take them all apart with this one you just pinch the inside and the top comes off real easy to clean so what I've been doing is for like iced tea or water in the summer I've been using this cup, and then for coffee, I've been using the one that's completely water sight. So, <coughs> it doesn't seem to release liquid at the same rate as the other one does. When you open it, 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 it dribbles it out more, which means I'm not overhydrating, which is kind of a problem with Camelbacks that I've had in the past. I, I like to drink a lot. Uh, but for like having it in the car, and I can use water i can have water ice cold and it stays ice cold for six seven hours it's gonna work out pretty well for me so i'm going go to the top we're gonna to take some comments and questions from people if you have especially comments about the stuff that we're talking about today the long-term review stuff or if you want to see more long-term review stuff what long-term review stuff do you want to see so i know what people are interested in if this type of stuff interests you let me know if it doesn't we'll stop doing it but i i people have asked so i figure i tell people you know where all these projects have gotten to so we'll go to the top here Uh, Peter Schmidt says, you've always been honest, though. You never just make stuff up to please a supplier. I don't think pleasing a supplier does anybody any good because if I say things that aren't true to make a supplier happy to get, you know, a free flashlight, that, that might help me in the short term. I might be able to give this flashlight to my brother, but that doesn't grow the channel. That doesn't tell anybody anything. And the idea of this is to educate people about, you know, tactics and equipment and when new equipment comes out it makes sense to, to use it and then continue educating people about it and my initial impressions of stuff aren't always correct later on down the road you know I I'll do a video on something hey this is what the manufacturer says this is my initial experience with it and most of the videos you get that's what it is and we have to use stuff long term to get an idea of what's working and what's actually not working out in the real world George Munoz says, what's a good flashlight attachment to a duty pistol, well-built and long-lasting? Uh, Olight's making good stuff right now. Everything that I've seen has pointed to uh, these working really well. I've heard reports of people um, from other channels saying that the attachment system has broken on them, although every person I've set, heard that from said that it broke immediately, which makes me think that they put it on with either the wrong attachment they had a Glock attachment on it, and they're supposed to have a 1913 rail attachment, or they're turning this, because this is a little pin on here. They're turning it and breaking it off or, or manhandling it or something, trying to get the light on there. I haven't had any issues with any of mine, uh, but long term, I have no idea yet. We're, we got the first one of these onto a pistol that's being regularly used about four months ago, the PL Mini. I gave a couple of them out. And then the, the little PL micro that slides up and down, I gave a couple of those out to friends of mine uh, to see what they do long term. So I'm waiting for reports back from those. And I have met a couple of people uh, who are using the, the PL Mini, the original one that just kind of clipped on, didn't slide. Uh, they've been using those on their duty pistols in holsters made for TLR1s because they easily fit in those. And I'm waiting to hear back if any of those have any failures. Uh, as far as stuff that's tried and true long term, uh, TLR ones seem to work really, really well. Uh, they can have a problem with the door on the back of the light breaking. I haven't had that same issue with any of my TLR twos, which are the same light with the laser on the bottom, but they have a different, a different door backing. And you have to remember, there's different generations of that. The original TLR ones, TLR twos from five or six years ago, seem to work really, really well. And I've gotten reports about bad TLR ones as of very recently, as of a year ago, when they changed the back door design. Obviously, 
if you want something that's going to be dead bang reliable and you don't care how much it costs, Surefire is pretty much always the way to go. You get a Surefire, you can be pretty sure it's it's going to work as a for a weapon light. Now, the problem with Surefire is that they've pretty much abandoned the police market. And for a while, they were making police market stuff, and it didn't really make a lot of sense. They weren't putting... Uh, the, the technology behind it that police officers actually need, they were putting stuff into it that you didn't really need. You know, a different programming instead of making it more durable. They seem to think that the police market is like the military market, but light. You know, you can make it not as good for the, the law enforcement market, but we're going to load it with features to sell it to people. It doesn't really work that way. It, the police market needs something that's just as durable as the military market does, but we need it to be rechargeable don't have somebody supplying us with CR123 batteries and you know we it, it needs to be purpose built for police work so weapon lights though surefire definitely uh, streamlight I've had very good service out of I have heard reports of doors breaking Olight we're still looking into I've also heard good things about nightstick but I don't have any direct experience with nightsticks weapon lights we use their um, their flashing batons it work like the traffic director batons probably a video about that coming up pretty soon uh, but not their weapon lights but I've heard good things about their weapon lights some things to think about uh, Justin O says what's the most reliable flashlight the most reliable flashlight that I've run has been the surefire g2z LED it's never broke and I don't know anybody that has one that, that has one that broke uh, also the g2z is kind of a, a lower level of technology it doesn't have a lot of electronics in it. Uh, the tail cap switch, if it you know, it breaks or you get a, a rip in the rubber, which mine has never had, it's a unit that you can unscrew, buy one, and screw it back on again. So that there's something there's something to be said for something that is a known wear failure rate that's easy to replace. Kind of like how we have uh, pressure switches. Pressure switches are made to just unscrew off the light and screw back on because it's a known failure point. You can't build that durable enough where it's going to work throughout the lifespan of the light. And Surefire does a really good job with being able to just replace the tail cap. Unlike some other companies, you look at like Terralux, it's got multiple switches on the back. There's electronics in this tail cap. And if the tail cap goes bad, you have to send the whole light in. With, with Surefire, a lot of their stuff, their known wear parts are replaceable. Sorry about the lawnmower. I'm doing this in my backyard. It's finally nice out. Uh, Tear Talk says, Tommy, we need to collab again. I love what you were able to provide to my audience. Your advice is spot on. Hey, I'm always open for it, man. And you know, like my phone number and my email and all of that. So just hit me up with ideas. Uh, Sector P110 says, Steamlight Stinger DS. It's been my standby since 2008. I don't like the DS. It's the dual switch one. But my Steamlight, uh, my Streamlight Stinger LED has been given me very good service over the years. <coughs> I was starting to have a switching problem with it that I, I got resolved and uh, by buying a new one. And uh, I recently started using the Olight Warrior X. That's one of our long-term review lights, but it's only been a few months on that. The Olight Warrior X is still doing great light. They, they bill it as a duty light. I'm like, well, if you're gonna, if you're gonna tell us that, it's gotta, it's gotta actually withstand it. So I'm using it this summer. I've got another backup light on me in case it goes out. But uh, so far, it's doing really well. Uh, Nicholas Barlow says, Good afternoon. I passed my police, Texas police officer test. I start working on the June 10th of June. Hey, congratulations. Uh, let's see. Smith & Wesson Model 19 says, Whatever happened to your WowTech A1S. All right, so the WowTech lights, uh, also the A-Tactical lights, is an interesting story. So I gave one of those lights away to a buddy of mine, his flashlight at work broke, and I said, hey, I need somebody to test a flashlight, and I gave him uh, one of the, wow, the I think it was the A-Tactical um, A1 or something like that. I gave it to him, and his wife, who's also a cop, promptly stole it, and then uh, I gave him another one, and they have been using those. So those have been in long-term testing for a long time. I'm waiting for one of those to break so we can bring it on and, and show you. But those are in legit long-term yes, testing as police duty lights. I got them both the rechargeable uh, uh, 18650 batteries that have the USB charger on it. They love that system. Be able to just take the battery out, plug it into a USB, and then push it back into the light when they're on duty. They think that's really cool. And so I'm waiting to hear back when they finally break. 
Everyone I give lights to, I tell them the same thing. When it breaks, I want it back so I can put it on video. <coughs> and no one has so far had a problem with that because some great stuff. Uh, Trucking Dog 1 says, how about the Guardian Angel light? I use the Guardian Angel light all the time. I was doing uh, traffic control a few days ago for like three hours out. In, it was starting to rain and stand in the middle of the street. We had a fatality accident. I used it the whole time. Uh, that light has been pretty stand up, man. Like I haven't had any problems with it at all. I think I've charged it twice the whole time I've owned it. I let it run all the way down until it steps down to the lowest power level before I plug it in and recharge it. I recharge it overnight and it's good to go again. I do really like the Epaulette clip. Uh, when I said, you know, use my coupon code, I think it's 80 clip and you get a, a free accessory. It automatically gives you the free epaulette clip accessory, which is a polymer, like clamshell clip. So you screw the light to the clip so you're not dependent on the magnet mount that it might knock off if you like put a backpack on. It clips on to this plastic clip and the plastic clip clips onto your epaulette. Dead bang reliable, pretty solid. I've really liked that light. And I found that I actually use the lights on the back a whole lot more at night, like pushing cars or doing traffic control. And then I can use the little red light at night to read driver's licenses. Uh, but when I was doing traffic control and we had all the light in the world on out there, we had squad car lights going and street lamps on, and we had our light truck up there lighting up a scene, and I could turn on the little light on my shoulder, and it was actually stopping cars when I was trying to cross the street to go from one thing to another, which is pretty awesome. So that thing has worked really well. Uh, Kyle Boswell says, my department mandates that we use the TLR 1HL for our duty pistols, Glock 17, would you recommend anything else? I think that's a perfectly capable duty light. Uh, if you want the high output that the, the HL gives you, that's great. It just burns through batteries a little faster. It'd be my big complaint about it. If you're doing a lot of inside house and stuff, you don't need that much light and you're you're burning through CR123s and there's not really good um, char rechargeable options out there for the single CR123 batteries that I'm aware of right now. But it's a perfectly competent light and I, I wouldn't, if my department said you have to use this, I wouldn't be throwing a big fit about it. I'd be like, all right, whatever. Nathan Sadler says, what taser should I buy? Uh, the one that you can, I think right now it's the C2 or the Pulse, you can get on the, the normal consumer market. The Taser X26C, I want to say, X26 civilian market, It it's expensive for what you're getting, and I don't think it gives you anything that the Pulse doesn't really. So that's where I would go. CPS 403 says, I have a non-related question. Why do some departments in my area prefer most applicants to step back or away from working as a doorman? I don't know what a doorman is. If you're in the UK, that's kind of like a front door security job. And I, I under, as I understand it, in the UK, they're not allowed to work security jobs if they're going to be a cop. You can't work them at the same time, so they want you not doing that. Let's find something that is pertinent. Nicholas Barlow says, we started carrying the nightstick lights at our store. They're bright, but have not tested them. Well, I, the baton, all I can still speak to is the baton ones, the traffic batons. And those work really well. We haven't broken any of them, so it's just kind of surprising. So we've had them for about six months now. So I can't complain too much. And Zephiel says, what's your favorite rechargeable light that has USB-C? I don't know of any rechargeable USB-C lights. My phone recharges off of USB-C. I don't think anybody, I don't know of anybody that's making lights that recharge off of USB-C. If they are or one comes up, put them down in the comments. I'd love to hear about it because it would be nice to only have to have the one charger, especially if I could find a, a light at work you know, that I could use for duty that charged off of that. I could charge my phone and the light and everything else off the same thing. It would be nice if Guardian Angel made one off of USB-C. That would be fun, All right? Let's see if anybody else says it. John Hurst says, made it, except the stream's basically over. <laughs> All right, any other comments and questions? Flashlights, any questions about the long-term stuff with flashlights? 
Uh, Kyle Boswell says, thanks for everything you do. Keep up the good work. I've been policing a little over two years. Help me tremendously. Have a great day. Stay safe. You do the same. So you guys be safe. Take care of each other. Uh, we'll see you with more long-term review stuff. Keep sending in those comments and questions about uh, gear and how the gear is going. And we will get to them when I can. I always like doing live streams and talking with you guys.